Good afternoon, dear friends. I'm Dr. Aisha Sunavala, consultant, infectious diseases at PD Hinduja Hospital, Mumbai. The current buzzword, coronavirus, one of the highest trending searches on Google today, has taken the world by storm. What is all the noise about? And does it really merit so much attention? Coronaviruses, as we understand them, have been around for a while. They're a large family of zoonotic viruses, which means that they are transmitted between animals and humans. They cause illnesses ranging from common cold to more severe infections like Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome and the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS. SARS coronavirus 2, responsible for the current global outbreak, is a new strain that has not previously been identified in humans. COVID-19 is the infectious disease disease caused by this novel coronavirus. Tickers like cricket scoreboards keep popping up on our television sets, our smartphones, our laptop screens. And they keep ticking as we cross the one lakh mark of confirmed cases in over a hundred countries across the world. Horrifying video clips from the epicenter in Wuhan and other places most affected by this virus are circulating on social media and they have only compounded our worst fears. The tourism industry has nose drive, economic slumps have seen a new low, government authorities across the world are grappling to combat the swelling numbers, and the WHO has finally declared this a global pandemic just yesterday. So how does all this impact the common man? Are we justified in rushing out there and stocking up on food and provisions, hoarding sanitizers and raiding chemists for masks? Let me start by discussing the idea of a pandemic. What is a pandemic? Put simply, a pandemic is a simultaneous worldwide transmission of a disease. It must meet three criteria. It should have sustained person-to-person -person transmission, it should cause serious illness, including death, and it should affect a large number of people with a worldwide spread. Sounds very much like COVID-19. So why did the WHO hold back for so long? Quoting from a recent media briefing by the Director General of the WHO, that looking at the total number of cases and the total number of countries involved doesn't really tell us the whole story. Of all the cases reported globally, so far, over 90% are only from four countries. Hence, the WHO felt that we can still contain this infection, and by that I mean prevent community spread. In most countries, if we work together to harness the necessary public health measures, including stringent screening of travelers, suspects, contact tracing, effective quarantine, and isolation of cases. So now that it's a pandemic, what does it signify? Once a pandemic is declared, efforts shift from predominantly containment, which is preventing community spread, to mitigation. And by that, we mean lessening the blow of the infection. So that involves stopping travel, virtual lockdowns, as we had seen in parts of China, like the Hubei district, province, and now in Italy. And so countries worst effective have actually adopted both measures, containment and mitigation, simultaneously. Are we heading for disaster? Are we doomed? Well, if we think back to the most recent pandemic in 2009-2010, we had the H1N1 or the swine flu pandemic. And how many of us really remember that over 500,000 people died in the first year of the H1N1 pandemic? The disease is still around, the infection is still around, and it remains a common strain of flu that we witness every year. So there's a lot of anxiety and panic in the heat of the moment, but eventually all pandemics do subside. And quoting a recent straight statement again from the Director General, he says, we cannot say this loudly enough, clearly enough, and often enough that all countries can still change the course of this pandemic. So yes, there is hope, and we must come together to do everything in our power to prevent a large-scale outbreak. 
So what can we do as responsible and yet concerned citizens? To begin with, empower ourselves with factual information about the disease, its transmission and prevention. Stringently follow authorized government guidance, updated travel advisories before you plan your travel, provide accurate information on your travels and your contacts when you're screened at airports, cut down on mass gatherings as has been advised, and strictly adhere to isolation and quarantine protocols. If needed, diagnosis and treatment should be from specified government authorized centers only. I will spend the next few minutes providing you with some basic information about the infection before I answer queries on the subject. The next couple of questions have been answered multiple times and so I'm going to go through them a little quickly. What are the symptoms of COVID-19 infection? They're non-specific, they're no different from most other viral infections. They most commonly include fever, a dry cough, sore throat, running nose, body ache. Some people may actually have no symptoms at all despite being, infection, despite being infected. How severe is the infection? For most infected people, that is more than 80% of people will have a mild self-limited illness. About one in six people will go on to develop a more severe illness requiring medical attention. Difficulty breathing is one of the most common and most important warning signs of a severe illness. Others include persistent high grade fever, a severe intractable cough, drowsiness, dizziness, extreme fatigue or lethargy. So to sum that up, about 80% of people without signs of severe infection may stay at home and need not be hospitalized. Understanding this could go a long way in reducing the burden on healthcare systems. Who's at the highest risk for the most severe infection? Older people and people who have other medical, chronic medical conditions like heart disease, lung disease, diabetics, smokers, cancer patients. Infection is less reported in children and relatively mild in children and adolescents. Yet, schools may be closed down as their schools, universities, colleges are areas of mass gathering where people come together for prolonged periods of time in close proximity. And children can also play a strong role in transmission of the infection in the community. Once again, if most cases are not severe, then why the alarm? And as the name suggests, the novel coronavirus has never infected humans before. So we have no immunity to this virus. It's very efficiently transmitted between humans, leading to large numbers of infected persons. Large numbers of infected persons means a relatively large number of severely infected people as well. Again, putting great burden on the healthcare system of a country. There has been immense awareness created on hoardings, mobile ringtones, newspapers, etc., on modes of transmission and prevention of COVID. And really, both these things complement each other. They go hand in hand. So we understand that the, 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 sorry, we understand that the disease can spread from person to person through droplet transmission from the nose or the mouth when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Hence, sick persons and those in contact or close caregivers, healthcare workers should put on a mask. Cough hygiene has been advocated for sick people which means that you cover your nose and mouth with a disposable tissue or you cough into the inner aspect of your bent elbow. Social distancing is something that is being spoken about more and more often, keeping a one meter distance from a person who appears to be sick. But it also means avoiding crowded places, avoiding mass gatherings, encourage people to work from home policies. The virus may also spread by sharing the same glass, shaking hands with an infected person, hence the preference for traditional greetings like a namaste over a handshake or hugs. Infected droplets may land on surfaces and objects around infected persons. Others are then infected by touching these objects and subsequently touching their face, their mouth. Hence the very important directive and regularly wash and clean your hands with soap and water or a hand sanitizer, especially when you're in public places after touching frequently touched surfaces. 
So the question that I get asked very often, should you wear a mask when in public places? It's not recommended that healthy people wear a mask at all times in public places to prevent COVID-19. It is difficult to keep on a mask at all times and an improperly worn mask can actually give you a false sense of security and be contaminated. Face masks are essential, again, for people who are sick, people who are coughing and sneezing, close caregivers of these people, and healthcare workers. Face masks are in short supply. Please, do not stockpile an indiscriminately used personal protective equipment like masks and gloves. Save them for people who genuinely need them. What is the current guidance on travel? The current guidance as per the Government of India, Ministry of Health and uh, Family Welfare website is to avoid any non-essential travel abroad, especially to the worst hit COVID-19 affected countries. Additionally, travelers returning from several countries which are mentioned on the website are advised to undergo self-imposed quarantine for a period of 14 days from the date of their arrival. This guidance is dynamic and it's likely to change in the course of the next few days and weeks. I would advise you to regularly update yourself up, um, by looking at this website. Regular updates are available including airport screening and quarantining rules which are provided. Finally, what should you do if you have symptoms of respiratory infection? At present, there is still no evidence of community-based transmission in Mumbai or in most parts of India. If you have not traveled abroad and had no contact with a sick traveler in the past four weeks, see your physician or your local practitioner and rest at home if your symptoms are mild. If you do have a positive history of travel or contact, please use the online numbers, the online helpline numbers which are on the Ministry of Health website, contact your nearest government authorized center and they will direct you to a diagnostic uh, laboratory and a diagnostic site. An updated list is provided of all the diagnostic laboratories across the country. And at present, the private hospitals are not authorized to test or admit patients with COVID-19. The government of India, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare website again has helpline numbers and email addresses that you may avail of. I'm going to end this by saying that facts not fear is the trending motto. Panic, stockpiling, hoarding of provisions, masks and sanitizers is irrational, irresponsible and detrimental to the community. Please refrain from disseminating false information, rumors and inciting video clips on social media. And once again, empower yourself with accurate, updated information from sites like authorized websites, like the Government of India website, the CDC or the WHO website. Thank you. And with that, I'll take some of the questions that we have received. As I will be traveling to Brazil, what precaution should I follow in flights and during my stay at the airport? As I just mentioned, the current guidance is to avoid all unnecessary travel abroad. If you must travel for whatever reason, again, it's difficult to keep a face mask on throughout your travel period, throughout your journey. You're bound to take it off if worn improperly could just be contaminated or give you a false sense of security. There's no real guidance on keeping a face mask on or taking any other precaution apart from regularly washing your hands and keeping social distances at airports and things like that. How are TB patients or cured TB patients? How do they need to take care during this outbreak? So there isn't any direct information on TB patients but other patients with chronic lung disease have been more vulnerable to serious clinical manifestations of this virus. So not just TB patients, but anybody who has a chronic medical condition, has you know, organ dysfunction in any way, should be particularly careful to you know, avoid crowded places, stay at home as much as possible at this moment, 
and um, keep social distancing from, especially from people who are unwell and coughing and sneezing. Is coronavirus spread through the air? No, we've discussed that. Um, it's it's spread by droplet transmission. These are large drop, droplets that are coughed or sneezed out from infected patients and they infect people around them in close proximity, in a one meter distance. What precautions should be taken while traveling in a local train? Well, it's very difficult to say because it's, it's a bit of a joke to say keep a one meter distance from people around you in a local train. We all know what our local trains are like. As far as possible, try to avoid this and try to avoid people who are coughing and sneezing. But until there are further government directives on public transport, it's going to be something that is difficult to contend with. Does it spread via mosquitoes and flies? No, there is absolutely no evidence that this infection spreads via mosquitoes and flies or any other insect vector. Can we eat egg? Is it safe? Absolutely. So the directive is that there is, up to now, there is no evidence that the coronavirus COVID-19 spreads through eating contaminated chicken or egg. And the directive is to actually cook the food, cook the eggs, cook the non-veg very well before you eat it. How long does it last once you get the virus? There is no definite time frame. It depends on the severity of the virus, depends on the host factors, you know, your age, what your other medical conditions may be, and whether you go on to develop a severe infection or it just passes. As I mentioned before, some people may have a relatively mild infection with no symptoms at all. Any patient is admitted in your hospital? No, there is no patient with coronavirus COVID-19 admitted at Hinduja Hospital. We are a private center and as yet we are not authorized to diagnose or treat this condition. Which drug is prescribed to treat COVID-19? There is no confirmed proven treatment for this infection at the moment. Treatment is largely supportive in the form of oxygen supplementation or mechanical ventilation for severe cases. Are there any other questions that I could take? There are some other questions that have come in as we speak. Any food stuff to avoid? I just covered that. No, if the food is cooked well, it's absolutely safe to eat. Do we have any free checkup center in Mumbai? Right. So the government authorized checkup center or diagnostic center in Mumbai is Kasturba Hospital, Sane Guruji Mark, Chinch Pokli, Mumbai. There are helpline numbers on the website and you could contact them for further information. How do you keep kids safe? As I mentioned earlier, kids, although great transmitters of this infection, develop a relatively sort of mild form of the illness and they're not known to go ahead to develop you know severe forms of this by and large however until we have more um, guidance or actual authorization from the government schools are still running in Mumbai city and uh, we're awaiting for the um, you know guidance in this respect if your child has a cold or a cough or is running a fever please refrain from sending them to school or to any other classes. This goes a long way in preventing transmission, preventing panic. And finally, if, um, if you have traveled recently, if you have traveled out of the country, taken flights, and traveled to any places which are strongly affected by the COVID-19, then it's wise to stay at home and keep your children at home for a period of 14 days. Thank you.